So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the way that I teach my students in my classroom how to answer math questions. I've marked a lot of math questions um, in my time as a physics teacher, and I believe if you follow these rules, then you should do really well in your so these are the rules um, that I'd like you to follow when answering any maths question. Get your magic physics pen. Um, th this is a real thing that I have in my classroom. Um, just pick a pen of your favourite colour. Um, mine is pink and sparkly, but it can be blue, it can be black, it can be a highlighter, it can be a felt tip, any pen you like. Find the question you want to do and then just circle all the numbers you can see in the question. Work out what these numbers are. So if it's kilograms, it's going to be mass. If it's um, time, it's going to be seconds. Get your formula sheet and find an equation with all these bits in. Now, if you don't have a fully annotated formula sheet, look at one of my other videos where I've gone through and I've explained what all the units for the equations are. Write down the formula. This is generally going to get you your first mark. Write down the numbers under the formula in the right place. Do the maths and add in the unit. If you forget your calculator, and please, please do not forget your calculator in the exam, you can still get a fair number of marks without actually doing the maths, because that's only a tiny part of it. So I like to teach this as a four mark question. Your first mark is for writing down the formula. Your second mark is for plugging in the numbers. The third mark is for doing the maths. And the fourth mark is for writing down the units. Now, physics exams are not like maths exams. Maths are just going to give you the um, question and want you to do the sums. Physics, there are generally lots of words involved. And the words in the maths questions really don't matter. So, uh, let's work through this one together. Um, I'm going to work through all of these equations for you. If um, at any point you want to pause it, have a go yourself and then play the video again to find the answer and check you're correct, that will be a fantastic thing to do. So I put the rules up here so we can all follow along um, what we're doing. And so get your magic physics pen, check. So for all the numbers you see in the equation, in the question, so I've got a number here and I've got a number here. Work out what these numbers mean. Now, kilograms, that is going to be mass and meters per second that is going to be speed or velocity remember velocity is just speed with direction and then it says really nicely find the momentum so the next thing grab your formula sheet and find an equation with all these bits in so i want to find an equation that has momentum it has speed and it has mass in write down the formula. So the formula we're going to use for this is P equals M times B. Now if you just had this question and the formula sheet you would really struggle because if you can't make the link between the units and what it actually is the formula sheet is virtually useless to you. So I always 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 really drill my students hard on what the units for everything is which is why I made a separate video going through the formula sheet and getting you to add on all of the units. It is so important. So um, we have mass and we have velocity. All I'm going to do now is plug the numbers in. So P equals 1,800 times 9.5. I'm going to do the maths. And if you can get your calculator and do this with me, you'll find the answer is 117,100. And the, uh, the, um, the units that we need... A kilogram meters per second. So if I had set this for my students, I would give a mark for writing down the units, I would uh, write down the equation, sorry, I would give a mark for putting the numbers in the right place, I would give a mark for the equation, and I would give a mark for the units. Okay, so here is another equation, um, or another question rather. I have my magic physics pen and I'm going to circle all of the numbers in the question, completely ignoring what the words say, because for this type of question, they really don't matter. So work out what each of these means. This kilograms is mass, 
meters is distance. And if you look at your formula sheet, you... It, okay, I've picked this one deliberately because it looks tricky, but it's really not. Because once you've worked out that kilograms is mass and meters is distance, you look at your formula sheet and realise there's only one um, equation that has both mass and distance in it. And it's the equation for gravitational potential energy, which is this. So, gravitational potential energy equals mass times the gravitational field strength times height. Now, they may or may not tell you that the gravitational field strength is equal to 10. And that is 10 newton per kilogram. Um, I've seen them tell you. I've seen them not tell you. It's fairly easy to remember to number. And I always get my students to remember that gravitation, gravity is 10. So, let's plug the numbers in. Um, potential energy, our mass is 47, our gravitational field is 10, and our height is 6.3 metres. If I do the maths, that comes to uh, 2,961 joules. You have to remember to put those units in. Okay, so this is our next example. I've um, got my magic physics pen. Circle the numbers that I can see in the equation. Watts, this is power. Seconds, this is time. And again, there is only one equation on your formula sheet that uh, has power and time on it. So once you've found that, that's energy equals power times time. Plugging the numbers in, power is 500, time is 5,400. Do the maths there. This is equal to 2,700,000 joules. So when I'm writing the words for these um, questions, I'm deliberately writing absolute nonsense um, because I want to show to you that you can do the maths equations um, by basically ignoring a lot of the words. So I have my magic physics pen. Oops. I am circling the numbers that I can see in the equation and it says find the work done. So I have uh, 2,700 um, kilograms, that is mass. I have meters per second, which is speed or velocity. And it says find the work done. Now, I've deliberately done this because this is something they do not to try and confuse you or try and trick you in the exam, but to see whether you can properly understand, um, so you can properly understand what's going on. There are two equations that have mass and work done in them. Um, the equation for momentum and the equation for kinetic energy. Um, and you need to decide which one of these to use. If we look at work done here, the unit for work done is joules, which is the same as a unit for kinetic energy. Now, they can say that kinetic energy is the same as work done, because when you're stopping a car, the work done by the brakes is the same as the kinetic energy. So if you've done this bit here, and you still can't work out the equation to use, have a look at this bit here and see if they've given you another um, hint. So the equation we're going to use is um, kinetic energy equals half mass velocity squared. So a half times my mass, which is 2,700 times 10 squared. Now, when you're plugging this into a calculator, make sure you do this bit first and then press equals. You don't want to, again, make a silly mistake and um, square the whole thing at the end. 
So if we pop that into our calculator, you will see the answer is 135,000 joules. Now, I just want to talk to you about units here. I have seen an exam paper where it says that that doesn't get a mark, but that does get a mark. So always, always, always make sure you have the correct units. Uppercase and lowercase letters mean different things. Okay, so we have another maths question here, and I've written it, and for you to look at that, um, you would think it's virtually impossible to answer, but I'm going to show you how. So I have my magic physics pen, I'm circling all of the numbers that I can see in the equation, so working out what these numbers mean. So joules is energy, and minutes is time. And then it tells me I need to find the power. So I need to find an equation for my formula sheet that has power, energy, and time on it. The equation we're going to be using is power is energy over time. Now, this question's ever so slightly more complicated because the units are not the same units I've got you to write on your formula sheet. Energy is normally measured in joules and time is normally measured in seconds. So the very first thing we need to do is convert kilojoules into joules. And we do that by times in by a thousand. So 4.8 times 1,000 equals 4,800 joules. And then I need to convert minutes into seconds. So I have two minutes, there are 60 seconds in each minute, so that's times 60, so that equals 180 seconds. You really, really need to be aware of what units you're using and make sure you have the right one. Because you might do everything perfectly, but you might have missed the fact that this is kilojoules and not joules, and then you're going to lose all the marks. So now that I've converted everything into standard units, I'm going to do power equals energy, which is 4,800, divided by 180 seconds. Sorry, my mistake there is not 180 seconds. Well done if you notice that. It is actually 120 seconds. 120 seconds, silly me. So, um, do the maths. Once you divide those, you'll find the answer is 40, and then we need to put our units on watts. Now, that was not a deliberate mistake, that was an honest mistake, but because I'd written down all of my working, if I had left this as 180, the examiner could see that I just made a tiny mistake and I would have gotten three out of the four marks. So I would have gotten the mark for writing down my equation. I wouldn't have gotten this mark because I made a mistake, but the examiner can see when you've made a mistake, as long as you've written your working down, and they can do something called error carried forward. So as long as you've actually done your maths right, I would still get the mark for the answer and I'd still get the mark for the units. So as Always, always, always write down your working. My students get nagged about this all the time until they do it without even thinking. Write down your working so if you make a silly mistake like I just did, you can still get loads of the marks.